Okay, so for the past few years, I've been using Notion for literally everything I do, and it's a complete productivity game changer. But since there's already a shit ton of videos about the basic features of Notion, and since my last Notion video got a lot of views, in this video, I'm gonna mainly focus on how Notion helped me get into Fang through the Amazon Software Engineering Internship. Basically, I'm gonna break down my Notion system for studying for coding interviews and leap coding. Make sure you stick around till the end because I'm gonna show you exactly how to get all of the templates I show you in this video. Even though I don't really believe in templates, but you guys seem to want them, so I'll show you how to get them. As always, timestamps are in the description, so feel free to jump around, and yeah, let's get to it. There are basically two parts of getting any software engineering job. The first part includes getting that first coding interview and applying, which involves your resume, projects, referrals, LinkedIn, all of that stuff. Then you have the actual coding interviews, and that part includes leak coding, data structures, and algorithms. This is the computer science knowledge you need to pass those tests. Now, I have Notion systems for each part, but I'm mainly going to take you through the coding portion and the rationale behind how I structured it. Okay, so now we're in my software engineering internships page. This page is kind of a dashboard or a hub for everything related to software engineering jobs. The left side is my section for coding interviews and the right side is for everything else related to the application process. Now this page is kind of a conglomeration of different things. It's not really a beautiful aesthetic notion setup like so many other people's, but it gets the job done. Let's dive into coding interviews. Now getting great at coding interviews is the single most important thing you can do when it comes to applying for computer science jobs and actually getting offers. We'll start off with my coding practice database right here. This is a massive hub of every lead code problem I've ever done or plan on doing. If you haven't heard of lead code before, it's this website with thousands of problems for computer science interviews. This platform is your best bet, the holy grail of interview prep. As a computer science student, lead code should be the thing you're thinking of right when you wake up in the morning and right before you go to bed. I don't pray to God, I pray to lead code five times a day. Anyway, here we have the title, the number, the source. These problems are mostly from lead code, but some of them are from Algo Expert, which is another platform I've used to study for these interviews. I've also listed the difficulty and the topics that the question covers. This way I can easily filter and sort these problems. Let's say I only want to review dynamic programming problems. All I have to do is search dynamic programming here and look at this. These are all dynamic programming problems in this database. Difficulty wise, your best bet is going to be focusing on primarily lead code mediums. These are the bread and butter of coding interviews. Most of these problems I picked are from the Blind75 list. And as you can see, most of them are mediums. The Blind75 is this ultimate selection of lead code problems that'll give you the most bang for your buck when it comes to studying. I think a Fang engineer just chose his 75 favorite problems and then posted it on the platform Blind. And then quickly people started to name that list the Blind75. My goal is by the end of the year to finish the entire Blind75 list and learn the details behind every problem. So how do I actually approach lead coding and adding them to this database? I'll clear my desk, get a stack of fresh extra long printer paper, I'll grab my favorite pen, the Pilot G2, I'll set a timer for 30 minutes, and yeah, I'll do the problem. If you want to know how I actually solve coding problems, my whiteboarding techniques, the tips I use, you can watch my Amazon video where I break down all of that and more after this. Now, the beauty of this Notion setup comes after I solve the problem. Let me open up one of these problems and I'll show you the way, the most protein-filled part of this database. We have Maximum Subarray here, a classic lead code easy. I use this template every time I review a problem that I solve. First, I'll start by uploading a screenshot of the problem I completed right here. This way it's easily accessible wherever I go and I don't have to go to leadcode.com every time I want to review a problem. I also go ahead and paste my entire solution right here. Notion has this cool code feature where you can paste code of any language and select the language you have. I chose Python and it will do proper syntax highlighting for you. The reason I store my solution here is again so I don't have to travel to find it. Plus I don't think lead code reliably stores your solution in the problem window so if you want to access it later you have to store it somewhere externally. But anyway if you solved a maximum subarray before, you're probably thinking this guy's a complete dumbass. And yeah, you're right. This is one of the first problems I ever solved, and my solution is unnecessarily long and overcomplicated. And that brings me to my first major reason for keeping all of the solutions, the official ones of on my own, in one long document. It's so easy to see the differences when you look at them side by side. This is the official one, the correct solution. And if you scroll up, you'll see that my solution is significantly longer. It's just so obvious that the correct one, the official solution is just better. Yeah, my code technically works, but it's extremely inefficient. It's important to really study the optimal solutions and critically think about why it's so much better than yours. In these questions down below, that's where I do that. The first question I always answer is, why did I choose this particular implementation? Now I've written a lot here. I don't always write that much, but when I do, it's really helpful. My goal is to 
capture my thought process in written form so I can access it later on. Programming is something that often heavily relies on your working memory. Meaning when you approach a problem, most of the solution lives in your short-term understanding, where a series of assumptions and logical steps exist. Math and computer science aren't like biology or chemistry. There's not a lot of pure information to memorize. You usually have a problem with set boundaries, and then you abstractly make a series of key insights in your head until you reach the solution. Yes, you can make diagrams and notes as you're solving the problem, but by and large, most of the work takes place in your mind as you're focused and thinking through the steps. The issue with this is that it's super fleeting. There are stories of mathematicians who present their own dissertation and then the next day forget how to solve their own problem because it's just so complicated. There's too much information stored in your short-term memory. That's why I like to store as many key assumptions I made as possible. So in the future, when I come back to review this problem, I know exactly what I was thinking when I originally solved it. The next question is about space and time complexity. If you haven't heard of time complexity, in a nutshell, it's a system to measure how quickly an algorithm runs with varying amounts of input. It's a lot more complicated than that, but think of it as something similar to speed. It's important because it's one metric to help you assess how correct your solution is. If you have excellent time complexity, you know you've done a good job. Efficiency is a huge part of writing good algorithms, especially during a coding interview. Next, I asked myself about better solutions and how they differ from my own. This is useful because it forces me to critically analyze other solutions and learn from them. A lot of people will grind hundreds of lead code problems, but they never take a step back and actually think about what they did wrong and what they could improve upon. Yes, practicing lead code is important, but it's even better if you improve with every single problem you finish. Next up, I have what mistakes that I make and what can I do next time to make sure I don't make the same mistake. These are both trying to isolate what specific actionable things can I do next time to improve on my solution. The next section here is for storing optimal solutions and breaking them down. I have lead code premium and that gives me several optimal solutions to understand when solving a problem. I usually copy and paste all of their solutions in this document and then underneath each one, I will write a few paragraphs to make sure I fully understand it. I'm using the Feynman technique here, which means that I'm rephrasing everything in my own words as a great test or heuristic for understanding. I don't just do this for only one solution. Usually they have different levels like brute force and then a few optimals. I like to go through both and understand them because it broadens your knowledge on the problem. You know you deeply understand a problem when you can solve it multiple ways and explain why one technique is better than the other. One cool feature Notion has is the template button. So if I click this add new solution button, it creates an entirely new section for another solution. Notice how I filled in a bunch of stuff like solution number, technique, to make the process as frictionless as possible. The next part of studying for coding interviews is learning all of your data structures and algorithms. And for that, the Bible is cracking the coding interview. This book goes into all of the content you need to know to pass your interview. Aside from leak code, this is gonna be your best resource. I didn't actually study most of this book because a lot of the information I learned in my data structures and algorithms classes. However, it's a great resource if you haven't taken those upper level classes and are just starting out. The way I take notes from this book is very similar to how I take notes from my classes, if you haven't seen that video. Let's go into this chapter on big O, which is one I did a while ago because it was before I had taken algorithms and I didn't fully understand it. Notice how I use the toggle feature to write questions for myself. I'm using active recall here. So whenever I review this topic, I will go through and open and close the toggles and quiz myself. Normally what I do is I'll look at a question like, what does big O mean in industry? And then I'll try to answer it. So I think big O in industry is kind of like big theta in academia. So it's the tight runtime. And that's what coding interviews are looking for. They're testing industry return. Let's open it and see if I was right. In industry of big O is what they call big theta. It's the tight runtime of the algorithm. This has been my default method for basically studying anything. It feels really odd to not write questions for myself at this point. By the way, a lot of people have been asking to see my Notion notes and I've decided once I hit 50,000 subscribers, I'm going to release my entire library of computer science notes to the public. That's you guys. So if you want to access everything I talked about in this video, all of my lead code notes, all of my computer science class notes, make sure to hit subscribe. Also, if you want all of the templates I talked about in this video, Video, you can hit the link in the description or go to www.manazer.org notion. There you'll be able to duplicate all of them. If you're interested in my Amazon journey, how I got into Amazon and how you can also get a fang job, you can watch this video right here. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. A subscribe would be legendary and I will see you in the next video.